the DeSotas of the world and the peoples of the world who I have been touched by, I would ask what happened to our young people? Why do they, why do they not understand that the legacy has been passed on to them? And why have they not stepped into the space that Dr. King and Ava Randolph and Nelson Mandela and Andrew Hayden and Ella Baker and they can go on and on? C.D. Gillian, John Lewis. Why haven't they stepped into that space? And as we hunt for answers, I've come to believe one fundamental truth is I ask you, what did you say to your children at the dinner table? What did you say to them when you came home, tired and hungry from a long day and just felt I didn't have enough time to spend with them? I needed to give them something to distract me from my responsibility to their growth to their emotional well-being. None of us have set out to be evil. None of us set out to be dismissive of our responsibility to our children. But the world has put an awful lot upon us. It's put an awful lot upon people who are poor. It has put an even greater burden on people who are poor and black. And in that context, you are not able to whether the forces that made us not as fully responsible to the hearts and minds of our children as we should have been. We're tired. We're overworked. We're without employment. We don't know where the next meal will come from. We don't know where we will get the money for the rent. All those are distractions that force us to be inattentive. While we try to straighten out those disorders and shape a greater society, I think in the final analysis we must look deep into our own existence and say, where did I leave my child untouched? Where did I become part of that which has numbed and gnarled his or her life? Where have I become part of those obstacles that have inhibited them from becoming the kind of men and women they desire to be, and we have impeded them from becoming. I believe that uh, if this fraternity, all of the men who are a part of it, live up to its credo, then I think we must take time out and say, what are we doing for our children specifically? Not just in giving money to the National Negro College Fund. That is a generosity and the kindness that is welcomed by students who will be the beneficiaries. But that's not, that's not the full extent of your obligation. That's not the full extent of your responsibility. It is not so much what you give once a year. It's what you give every hour. And I looked through the list of those who made up the ranks of the fraternity's history. I am so pleased that I should have served so many that are members. I knew Kwame Nkrumah. I knew him when he was at Lincoln University. And, uh, I knew him when he was in London. I knew him when he was debating with Dr. Du Bois and Paul Robeson. I knew him when he understood that he would become the head of state the nation of Ghana. I also knew him when he was overthrown. 
I spent time with him in Guinea. We talked about his life and his anguish and of the strange twists and turns of history. But he, A. Philip Randolph, and so many others that have given of themselves to the world have now uh, extended their embrace to bring me into their family, into their legacy.
We always take a look at C.T. Vivian and say, 